All right, let's try to figure out what happened last week and what its impact will be. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome back to uh, an original program for the week of the holiday. So uh, happy 4th of July to you, post haste. We are recording this program on Tuesday because of the 4th of July holiday. If you watch the show on a regular basis, you know that we tape the show on Thursday midday. So this is actually two days earlier that we're taping. And it's really important to say that because we're going to talk about data as we say in Rhode Island, uh, like Ripter, as we say in Rhode Island. Uh, and, you know, things can change and polling data, uh, I'm sure, is happening all over the country and it all evolves. And I will tell you, I have learned long ago uh, from my expert guest, who you're completely familiar with, that it's only a snapshot in time. And I will tell you, time is moving, um, you know, pretty rapidly here toward the general election. So um, just keep that all in context, if you will. But uh, thank you for tuning in, whether you're watching on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, on the various stations um, in our fine company that you watch the program on. So, uh, like you, I actually was in northern Vermont uh, last week, uh, scraping to watch the debate on my phone. And I think I just, I think as I was watching it, I just kind of went, uh, uh, and I think my head hit it. I, it was like, oh no. Uh, 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 oh, no, oh, oh, no. And I think anybody that was hoping Joe Biden was going to State of the Union overperform uh, was like, oh. And for those of you who are uh, seeing this thing differently, you were popping champagne probably in the first 15 minutes because there's no doubt that Donald Trump was fluent with his lies. I mean, completely fluent with his lies for at least a half an hour. Then he started to unravel, but because Joe had already shown himself to be deteriorated and was making kind of a comeback, the whole thing had been established. That's kind of my take. Uh, what happens from here, I have no idea. Snapshots in time are, are the theme, and uh, Joe Fleming will join us momentarily. In the meantime, uh, some local reaction and some pretty uh, candid local reaction. Uh, headline here first uh, from the, uh, the situation. Yeah. And then uh, Ted Nisi went into the field and talked to uh, key Democratic officials who didn't sugarcoat it. Tens of millions of Americans watched Thursday night as President Biden struggled through the first televised presidential debate, sending shockwaves through the Democratic Party. A CBS News poll over the weekend showed the share of voters who think Biden does not have the mental and cognitive health to serve as president jumped from 65 percent to 72 percent. Your honest reaction to the debate. I think, uh, like a lot of people, I was pretty horrified. Rhode Island U.S. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse tells 12 News Democrats remain united about the need to defeat former President Donald Trump, but they're looking for reassurance from Biden and his team. Well, I think people want to make sure that this is a campaign that's ready to go and win, that the president and his team are being candid with us about his condition, that this was a real anomaly uh, and not just the way he is these days. Uh, I was disappointed, like a lot of other people, uh, but I have to keep working. Congressman Gabe Amo used to work in the Biden administration. He spent this past weekend campaigning for the president in New Hampshire. I think people are have a genuine concern, uh, and that's okay. Uh, it, we should be honest with people. We should be transparent uh, with people, but at the same time, Everybody knows how high the stakes are. Beyond the campaign, the debate also raised questions about Biden's ability to serve as president now. Were you taken aback as someone who gets to see him up close once in a while, unlike most of us? Yeah, I've never seen that happen before. So this was not how you guys all knew behind the scenes he's like this? No, no, no. That, this was a surprise. Where were you? It's, it's kind of like one of those moments. Where right. were you? Just got home and was watching the debate, and again, I was shell shocked. I was looking to see a Joe Biden similar to the State of the Union. Maybe not as good, but at least going after Donald Trump. He did not go after Donald Trump at all. He was really tongue-tied, incoherent, mumbling. This is not the Joe Biden people are looking for. The question is now, how much impact is that going to have on this race? Yeah, no doubt. So uh, Joe Fleming, of course, our pollster and top pollster in the state, and 
a guy I rely on, and uh, you know, he and I just laugh about it over the last few years that I'm, I'm completely trained now, like a trained <laughs> SEAL. It's only a snapshot in time. Right. It's, it's kind of interesting um, to talk about what the polling data is reflecting as we speak on Tuesday midday. That CBS poll that Ted was referring to, I think, reflected the kind of horror that everybody right. felt immediately, mm -hmm. right? No question about that. Right away, people said, you know, how can this man be the president? The question is, how are they feeling about it today after they thought about it for a while? Are they saying, you know, I may not like what I saw, but I'll take 110-year-old Joe Biden over Donald Trump no matter what. And there's millions of people who feel that way. The question is, is there enough people who feel that way? Right. And his, his movable numbers seemingly have shot up. Like, like his, his support seems to have been polably steady, but inside it, it's shaky. That's what I'm So my, when I say that, I've got a poll, Survey USA, yeah. uh, and we had a little technical issue, so I can't put these numbers up, so just give it a listen. Might be uh, better for you anyway. Uh, Biden just down two points, which right. was which was steady. Right. CNN, just before we got on here, had no change in the Biden-Trump thing, Correct. although he was down significantly in that poll anyway. Exactly, but the same as it was two months ago. Other polls have him either plus two or minus right. two. But, Joe, it's fascinating that the top number hasn't budged yet. No, it hasn't. And if I'm the Biden's advisors, I'm looking at those numbers. And I'm sure they've done internal polling. And they're looking to see what the internal numbers look like. Is he staying still because people just can't stand Donald Trump? Or are people saying, well, I can't go with Joe Biden. I have to go with Donald Trump. And again, Dan, the big thing is simply we're looking at national numbers. This race is state by state. It is electoral vote. I'm looking at Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. What's happening to those numbers? Trump has always had a lead there. Is he increasing that lead or is it staying the same? If it's staying the same, that's good news for Joe Biden. He gives him the opportunity to close the gap. But if Donald Trump's lead is great, going larger in those swing states, that's not good news for Joe Biden. Are, the, are those states reflective? Are they so purple that they are reflective of the national polling data? Meaning, when we hear national polling data, should we, could, should we infer that the same kind of competitive dynamics are occurring in those states? Not necessarily. I mean, let's take a state like Michigan. If the national polls show Joe Biden by two, he could still be down by two or three in Michigan, and that's the election, <laughs> you know, right there in that one state. So it doesn't always reflect nationally. As I'm saying, you've got to look at all the individual swing states. St. Anselm had a poll in New Hampshire only. Right. New Hampshire is a blue state mm -hmm. uh, and had Trump up four. Four. And that was after the debate. Right. And that's a state which at one time was more of a swing state. It's now more of a blue state. But again, it's the snapshot. It could be just a reaction for the but debate. They, they, they elect Republicans in New yes, Hampshire. Yes, they do. Well, Sununu is the governor. Right. So they can go either way. And I mean... The thing to keep in mind with all these polls is we talk about the margin of error. The margin of error most of these polls are 2, 3, 4 percent. So it's still a very close race. But if I'm Joe Biden, I'm concerned about that. I would look at a state like Virginia, who has become more blue in the last few terms. Can they stop moving back towards the red uh, because of this debate performance? We'll have to find out in the next few weeks if we see some polls. All right. Your skill set and your, and your science are so important. At the same time, it has limitations. Yes. Let me not suggest what those limitations are. You tell me first, what are the limitations well, in polling data? Because well, I have some questions about this debate Thursday in, in the polling data and what you can actually extrapolate from the true conscious, uh, uh, consciousness well, of the vote. Well, as you said, Dan, the poll is not one of the snapshot, but when it takes place. You know, and in the poll, you got to make sure you get the right demographics, the right age groups, the right sex, all of those types of things. And you have the margin of error. Almost all these polls are within the margin of error. If you remember four years ago, in all the polls, Joe Biden had a four or five point lead over Donald Trump, and he barely squeaked out the election in the end. So, you know, you get an idea, but it's not exactly precise. They're not going to give you the exact number all the time. And again, voters' minds fluctuate greatly, and we're seeing that right now. Do the questions and the answers in a poll like this, given this unprecedented time, 
and really this unprecedented week. Right. Can you actually devise accurate questions for accurate results? It, it's very difficult at times because I could take any question and make slant it one way or the other. You got to try to find that question right in the middle that does not slant the question that you're asking. You know, if you're asking about Joe Biden's debate performance, about, you know, is he still capable of being president? You have to get that worded correctly. If you don't, you're biasing the question and people will slant one way or the other. For instance, in this Survey USA poll, 55% of Democrats say they're still with him. Right. 34% are worried. Right. And movable. But they, they ain't moving across no. the aisle. So no. they might be worried. Right. And the CNN poll, by the way, has 75% of Americans thinking that Democrats well, could make a better choice. Mm -hmm. Yet the top number is still the same. Right. You, you may feel like I can get a better choice. I'm concerned about Joe Biden. But the question is, are you still voting for Joe Biden? And the answer to a lot of these Democrats are, yes, they still, in the end, will vote for him. I may not like what's going on. But he still has my support because he's the Democratic nominee, and I prefer to see him over Donald Trump. And the Republicans are just the same way. They prefer Donald Trump over Joe Biden. And the thing with, with, with Democrats and Republicans, as you get closer to the election, a lot of them tend to come home, the polling shows. We see it here in Rhode Island. Seth Magazine against Alan Fung two years ago. The polls had Alan Fung up by five or six points. In the end, Seth Magazine closed the gap and won. And I've seen that in other races in the state. Uh, when Gina was running against um, Alan Fung, it was very close, to the end. she opened the margin up. Democrats and Republicans tend to come home to their base. Now, in Rhode Island, there's a lot more Democrats than there are Republicans, so that helps them even more. And I think nationally, you're going to see, at least I believe, Democrats will start to come home as it gets closer after Labor Day. Right now, I think it's still very fluid, but the polls are showing hasn't moved much. Are you able to detect from polling whether people are doing a, a, a real... Um, psychological evaluation and recognizing the difference between the general challenge of campaigning versus governing mm -hmm. and then inside the campaigning that mishap on Thursday where the debate performance was just uh, either a bad day an indication of decline right but decline, you know, in front of the cameras and a 50 million, you know, television audience is not as relevant to the the, the job of the chief executive mm -hmm. as sitting behind a desk, you know, getting information, having right. a meeting, you know, making a decision, getting on with Netanyahu, talking it over. Those are very different behaviors. Do you can you find in a poll that people recognize? You would that? have to explore that deep, ask a series of questions. You don't to get find that any out. of those kinds of deep asks. No. Though. Because, poll, again, polling is very expensive, and you need a very long poll to do these types of things. But people, I think, overall, look at it as he campaigns. That's the way he runs the government. And they're concerned about that because the way he had a sort of a meltdown Thursday night, where he couldn't even answer some of the questions, is he having that same type of problem in the White House? Well, look, and that's in their mind. He's a stutterer right. lifelong. Absolutely. Which, which does impact, mm -hmm. you know, if you're, if you're slowing down and declining, it's going to be more profound. Uh, but I think we have to I, we have to recognize, and I have to admit, everyone's got to admit that that was a complete shutdown. Right. I don't know if that was a moment of panic or a moment of, you know, uh, just you know, you know, mental. Mm -hmm. There there are names for it, and I'm not going to use them because I'm not going to be a you know a television um, doctor here, or whether he was just having uh, a moment that was hyper you know hyperbolized by a condition he already. Now, with the hyperbolic version of a condition right. he already has. Mm -hmm. we, that's what everybody's trying to figure out. Right. right. I mean, we don't, we don't know. I mean, it could have just been an absolutely bad night for him. Um, yeah, Carl Bernstein's on CNN last night saying that he's got, you know, two dozen re uh, people inside and outside as reporters who said they've seen this coming, that, like, this thing is deteriorating, you know, in person. Yeah. Sheldon nope. says on that package, I haven't seen it. You know, right. But, I mean, we're hearing it both ways. We have people from inside the White Dan House. Dan says he's had two meetings with him. He was terrific. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, uh, is it when he reads off a teleprompter, is he a lot better, it seems? And he's having trouble with the going without cards and notes, giving him problems to, for his thoughts. I mean, because the State of the Union was just the opposite of what we saw Thursday night. The State of the Union was fantastic for him. And but again, that didn't move the numbers much either. 
These numbers have not moved in this whole election. Really good point. You're right. We thought that would be a barnstorm five-point spread. Right. Nothing. Nothing. And this, I mean, Trump, Trump getting convicted, not a great movement. With this, this I haven't seen big moves. What does it yet. say about Trump? You know, looking at you know, because he's he's getting away with murder here, uh, political murder. You know, he's <laughs> you know, never mind the SCOTUS decision this week, which we'll touch on. Joe Biden falls down so badly, and he doesn't break it wide open. Right. There's another way to look at this. Oh yeah, there's, there's a large block of voters who are never Trumpers, and there's no matter who the Democrats have up there, they're voting for the Democrat or anybody except for Donald Trump. And that's a big block of voters. At the same time, there's a big block of voters that are voting for Donald Trump. And as I said, it's, I've said this before on your show, Dan, is a small group in the middle on which way they're going to go. And that's where the debate, the conviction, all that comes into play. People are saying, well, I got a convicted felon, or I got a man right here who's having problems speaking. Who do I want for president? Or thinking. Or thinking. It's now, it's now that's the thing. It's moved from speaking to, uh, is it thinking? Right. And that's... That worries. All right, when we come back, what's the impact of this uh, down ballot and uh, the SCOTUS decision as well? Stay with us. We'll talk about the Supreme Court ruling here in just a second, but Joe and I were kind of chatting during the break. It's a couple things. Uh, down ballot. Right. Aren't, aren't members of Congress really the pivotal influence here? If they feel like their data is being, or debtor, as we say in Rhode Island, if their debtor is being affected by Joe Biden's mm -hmm. um, problems, this could be, like the Governor's Association reportedly today has asked for a meeting, uh, Democratic Governor's Association, mm -hmm. with, with the President. Whether Joe Biden and Joe Biden in their, in, their, in their little Idaho decide one way or the other by themselves, that's gonna be a big influence, yes? Uh, the influence is, yeah, the down ballot, right now the Democrats in Congress, Governor, they were all concerned about what's going to happen if Donald Trump starts to gain so much up in the front. The problem is, if you're going to change nominees, here, here's your problem. The convention is into mid-August. so Maybe not. They're talking about moving it up a month. Well, they, they would have to because the Democrats are going to be fighting among themselves from now to the convention well, if Joe Biden steps out. It's a good point, Joe. They're talking about moving it up a month perhaps to solidify Joe Biden. I think there's a wink and a nod going on there that they move it up to, to give themselves better options post Post game, here's the thing that most people don't understand about because our civics uh, uh, acumen is not very high. Uh, if they go and battle it out in a convention, mm -hmm. it'd be all holy hell, right? Right. But if he just stays in the convention, gets the nomination, then decides, then a committee makes a decision. I, I, it, so that would purify it. It would also be morally perhaps vacuous, but. What morals do we have well, in this whole situation? I'll be surprised if that happened because you're getting so close to the election and all this time. Right, he couldn't role play that he wants to stay and then say, you know, I'm out. I'll, I'll be surprised. Right. I mean, think of, think about this. Four years ago, the primary started. Joe Biden was getting killed. Everyone thought he was done. He, you know, why is he even still in this race? To come to South Carolina and everything changed. You know, so I mean, you never know in politics. Well, what can Things Jim can Clyburn change. do this time? Uh, I think it'll be tough for Jim Clyburn. This has to be Joe Biden. He has to get out there from here on and be the old Joe Biden. Is the elephant in the room here, Kamala Harris, that that her lack of, I mean, her, she doesn't poll very well, but no. I, have, I also think she doesn't have much of an identity. And yeah. I, I think that she's a black woman is a bias problem for her that she's got to disprove with, with the American public. And I, I just think that, I think I, she doesn't worry me. Right. But she worries a lot of people. Right. Is, her, is the hand here to at least expose her and, and, and have her prosecute Donald Trump on a full-time basis? You know, be on television every doggone day and leave the fight to her? I, I think they're going to try to do some of that. They're going to use surrogates to do a lot of the fighting also. We saw Joe Biden the day after the debate giving a speech, uh, again, off a teleprompter, but he was 100% better than he was on Thursday night. Um, yeah, but then he went to, then he went away for a few days right. to try to figure out what he was doing, yeah, I guess. They, they, they got to keep him out there. They got to make him look like he's viable of being the president, not just hiding him and having him come out every so often. You got to get him out there. He has to be strong. But I think they will use Kamala Harris to try to go out there and attack Donald Trump as much as they can. Hmm. All right. When we come back, uh, oh, actually, you know, uh, we'll talk about that Scotus thing. I promise you. Stay with us. A lot to do. Wow. <laughs> 
So I wish we had more time for this, but the impact of the SCOTUS decision to provide ample immunity to the president for official acts and then have to discern what official and unofficial are in the January 6th trial by Judge Chunkin in, uh, Chunkin in, in Washington will delay that trial. Oh. It will not happen before the election. Absolutely. So take that out of the mix, correct? Absolutely. And keep this in mind. Once the judge decides, I'm sure the Donald Trump people will appeal it. You know, that, oh, no, this should be excluded also. Right, whatever. whatever. It's going to be a long time, I think. Well, also, the, the Stormy Daniels case now, there's a, there's a right. slight chance that the state judge, having seen the Supreme Court's right. uh, view on official acts and official communications and knowing that a lot of the stuff was on a phone, mm -hmm. which previously had been determined to be an official vehicle right. of communication. So who knows? But, but the damage is done on the Stormy Daniels thing. Oh, yeah. You know, he says he didn't have sex with her. He <laughs> said it on television. I wonder if she's going to come out and say and give some kind of proof. I, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to be salacious here, but at some point, someone's got to call him out. Maybe she takes a lie detector test. I don't know. What kind of candidate, what kind it, of a campaign I've, this is this? Dan, I've never seen an election like this in my life. Ever. i watched many presidential elections. I mean, between Democrats and Republicans, it's totally chaos. Um, Don, Donald Trump, in all practicality, shouldn't even be in this race in some ways with all the things that's happened to him. But he's strong and he's a, he's a front runner at this point. Uh, it, he has such a loyal base that's staying with him. And again, part of his goal was to avoid all these trials after the election, and it looks like he's done it with everyone but one of them. Yeah. Uh, 30 seconds on local. We had a, uh, pardon me, we had a Selve Regina poll. Right. Uh, that has the governor uh, a little bit of a hit. Um, is it one word? The bridge? That's, it, it that's could, two words. It could be the bridge, but keep this in mind. Our past governors never had high ratings. Gina never. Armando had low ratings. Uh, Chafee's ratings were in the toilet. Don Kachiri's his second term, his ratings were very low. Rhode Islanders have not been given high job ratings to the governors in many years. How come? You don't like the governors? I'm not sure. It's such a small state, too. Um, the governors are out. Uh, they're doing things. But it's just the image of them. And again, I've seen polls with Dan McKee's numbers have been higher also. Yeah. And again, snapshot, he has two more years. The bridge could be part of it. But will they vote against the man just on the bridge? I don't know. Depends on the day. Right. Um, I, I think he's got more to offer than the bridge that he had inherited. Joe, thank you. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. Uh, final word. I don't think people are going to vote just on the bridge. Shuffling the deck on some vacation time so you'll either see an original program next week or one of our former terrific conversations. Um, but we'll be here a lot this summer, I promise. You have a great post-4th of July weekend. See you.